From Camp Randall Stadium, the calendar says October. It feels like November. The bottom line, it's Big Ten football once again as the Wisconsin Badgers entertain the Hoosiers of Indiana. I'm Vance Dowd, joined by Jamie Vandervelt. We got the 1AA stuff behind us. Now it's back into the Big Ten saddle again. And I'm sure that Barry was very happy to get out of the Western Kentucky game with a win. Now he has a chance to go to 2-0 in the Big Ten by thumping the Hoosiers today. Yeah, if Barry's team can come out with a fast start today and get off to a 2-0 start in the Big Ten, that puts them right at the top with Michigan and Northwestern and the other teams. What they didn't want to do last week was come out and play sloppy football. They wanted to come into this week fast and playing well. Well, you know what? Traditionally, after a bad game like last week, they'll come out and play well today. Now, the Hoosiers are led by Mr. Electricity, perhaps one of the most electrifying players in all of college football, Antoine randall After the first game of the season in which he did not start a quarterback, they moved him to wideout. Cam Cameron, the Hoosiers coach, said, hey, enough of this experimentation. He can worry about his pro life after Indiana. We want to get him back into the quarterback slot again. Yeah, exactly. He's such a great player. They wanted to give him the ball in more situations. But how better of a way to get him the ball than to snap it to him every time? I did not understand them moving him out to wide receiver. But as you see his stats, he's the only player in NCAA 1A history with 6,000 total yards passing and 3,000 yards rushing. A phenomenal athlete, phenomenal player. But his uh, win-to-loss ratio wasn't very good. Now, Wisconsin, of course, they played an option team last Saturday in the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. It works very well that they now get ready for a real option team. The game's going to be much quicker, and uh, certainly the Secretary of Defense for Wisconsin has been one, Wendell Bryant, and uh, he's been the sack master, if you will, for the Wisconsin Badger defense. Wendell's been phenomenal this season, stepping to the forefront as maybe the number one defensive lineman in the country. You see some of his stats, 29 tackles. The big number there is 10, T or 10 TFLs with nine quarterback hurries. Ten of those TFLs are sacked, or seven of those TFLs are sacks. And he's, like you said, the Secretary of Defense. He goes out there and just leads his Badger defense to victories. We heard last Saturday, and we talked about it during our telecast, and you've already alluded to it here. Get off to a fast start. Wisconsin is 3-0 and against Randall L. If they can keep him contained, last year they kept him contained for most of the ball game. But uh, if you can keep him from breaking off big plays, the longer you keep him over on their sideline, the better off you should be. Yeah, the best defense is keeping Randall L. off the field and having your offense have some long, sustained drives, chunking the clock out and keeping the ball out of his hands because he is a playmaker. The Badgers will look to double their pleasure in the Big Ten as they take on the winless Hoosiers. We expect another sellout full house crowd here at Camp Randall Stadium as the Badgers now stay in the Big Ten from here on out. Indiana's game as a result of the terrorist attack back on September 11th they had a game back in September scheduled against the Kentucky Wildcats. They'll finish that out December 1st. So they've got one non-conference game left on their schedule. Barry Alvarez, of course, patrolling the sidelines. Uh, always working the gum, got the shades, got the eyes shaded. He's ready to go and uh, has done quite well against the Indiana Hoosiers. And then Cam Cameron, his counterpart at IU. And there's been mentions already from Bloomington that, uh, guess what? Cam Cameron is on, in the hot seat, on the hot seat. He might be out of the hot seat before it's all said and done. Uh, his record has not been very successful uh, while it Indiana there you see Cam Cameron played basketball there you see his record and uh, he's over and I'm sure that Barry would like for him to remain over uh, when it's all said and done here this afternoon yeah I can guarantee you Barry doesn't want to give him his first victory of the year here at Camp Randall today this is going to be and you know your game six of the ski uh, the schedule and uh, as you examine how Wisconsin has done. They've won the last six games against the Indiana Hoosiers. There you see what the series reads like. And IU's last win came all the way back in 1992. 28-20. Wisconsin uh, won in Bloomington a year ago, 43-22. The final score not really indicative because they really put that ball game away in the second half. And then the last time the Indiana was here. Whoa, that was a good old-fashioned thrashing that day. 59, the zippity doo dah. Now, we're not expecting to see Delonte McGrew start this afternoon because uh, he injured his shoulder, and uh, we'll show you the play, and you can kind of see where he got tangled up in one of his own teammates and uh, was hurled to the stadium turf. There you see him shaded there. He's trying to just go down the line here as he's trying to. It's assignment football, as you, as you know, Jamie, when you're playing the option. 
And then, oops, and then he kind of just stayed there motionless for a bit because uh, hurt the right shoulder. It, we're told that uh, Anthony Davis bothered by a bout of turf toe. Not sure of his availability today. We might see Jerome Pettis uh, at the starting tailback. There you see Delonte McGrew. Looks like he's he's dressed and ready for bear. A windy day. Keep that in mind as this game unfolds in a chilly day. I've already got my gloves out. Jamie's already given me grief because I got my <laughs> gloves out. I learned a long time ago. Better to be warm than to be chilly. And we are underway, and that is not going to be returned again. Now, Indiana there kicking with the win. So Wisconsin will start out from their own 20-yard line under the direction of Brooks Bollinger coming in. Bollinger 20 and 3 as a starter. Didn't play particularly well. Neither did the offense as a unit, for that matter. Last Saturday, the first Saturday in which Anthony Davis did not gain 100 yards on the game, on the ground. And he could have, though. They pulled him in the fourth quarter. Bollinger goes deep. He's got Evans. And, oh, man. I want to tell you, that could have been a highlight catch, but it was very, very good coverage by Sherrod Wallace as well of Indiana's defense. Indiana's defense has been accused of giving too much space between themselves and the offensive receiver, but Wallace had him blanketed that time. Nice throw by Bollinger, and that's into the wind, too. And that's a great ball, and Lee's got to stretch all the way to get it. And because he had to stretch so far, he couldn't pull it in quick enough, and Sherrod Wallace just punches it right out. A great play. Out of the spread, Bollinger, and he loses five just like that. Is there a fumble? No. Referee, I don't know if he just threw his marker there just to mark the play where it was down. So Wisconsin, after trying to go for the home run on first down, now faced with a third and 15. Bollinger, Pettis, Coons, Evans, Davis, and Nelly. Johnson, Benning, Johnson, Barrett, and Jowers up front. And Bollinger and company, they have their hands full on third and 15 from their own 15-yard line. Coming in, Wisconsin has completed 59 of 129 passes for 45, almost 46%. Here's Bollinger, gets some heat, quarterback draw. Bollinger doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be three and out for Barry Alvarez's offense. You know, I like the play call in first and 10, but when you don't complete it and then all of a sudden you lose five the next go-around, uh, you're working behind the 08 ball. Well, a couple things happened on that drive, and you saw it in the last two plays. Guys on the offensive line up front were missing some blocks, and that's how the penetration in the backfield and happened. Anytime you got to start making cuts, just as you get the ball, you're going to have some problems. Kirk Munden, and that's right, it's Antoine Randall L. Good block, Randall L across the 45, and finally ridden down at about the 46 yard line. 46-yard kick, and Antoine Randall goes over to the sideline, I think, just to talk to the brain trust of IU. He'll be back in the quarterback slot again as the Badgers go three and out. There you see what he's done this year. 345 yards passing, two TDs, two interceptions. More importantly, though, he's averaging almost five yards a carry when he runs with it. That's where he's most dangerous. Randall L. He's going home run. Starts and it's caught. 101 coverage and give the edge to the offense and Travis Haney. Haney coming in with four catches, make it five. Starks is right there, but he didn't try to swap the ball away. Yeah, they came out with the exact same play that Wisconsin ran on their first play. And what you're going to see here, Haney right there, number 80. He's running right down the middle of the field, and Scott Starks gives him the inside. And Haney's a big, tall receiver. Starks has got to get up there, knock that ball out of his hands. First and goal for the Indiana offense. Badgers backed up defensively. Randall L, and he pitches, and it's a touchdown. Boy, Wisconsin defensed it pretty well, but guess what? They didn't allow him to... They still allowed him to pitch the ball. And Levron Williams gets the touchdown. Well, you got Randall L. handling the ball. There's not a better guy in the country to run the option. And you see Bryson Thompson there at the very end. He had a, he had a guy blocking him and wasn't able to slide over the top. 
to take Levron Williams out. Well, the fans have barely even gotten a chance to get their hot chocolate stirred up and uh, get situated. And their Badgers are down 6 nothing as we await the point after. And that's been a source of concern for Cam and Cameron, but Brian Roberts score, splits it. Three plays for both offenses. The difference is a seven-point <laughs> edge for Indiana. And, and it's funny because they both came out with the exact same play. I mean, there was no difference in that play at all with their first play of the game for each offense. The only difference was Lee Evans got the ball knocked out of his hands as he was trying to tuck it in. Haney was able to tuck it in because Scott Starks is a little smaller and playing on the outside. Remember what we said about the fast start? Uh, so much for that now. Yeah, Wisconsin exactly. and Barry Alvarez forced to play catch-up football in your own backyard here. Here's Nick Grayson. He's got Randall L wrapped up. He's not going anywhere. But he had the presence of mind to pitch it outside. And maybe Levron Williams has never scored an easier touchdown in his life. Van, I think you could have made that one. I mean, Randall L takes this all the way to the last second, pitches it. Scott Starks is on an island there because Grayson gets there a little late. Starks was responsible for Williams there. Bryson Thompson, the linebacker, just had a blocker on him, wasn't able to slide over the top to help out Starks. Well, Indiana's already done great since the last time they were here when they were skunked 59 zip. <laughs> they already got seven on the board. Hey, they this remember that. This game is 12.55 into the first quarter. <laughs> I guarantee you, Cam Cameron emphasized that score of last, last game here for Indiana to his team. And uh, they came on energized. Last year against the Badgers, Randall L, 14 of 30, 195 yards, more importantly, three interceptions, no touchdowns, rushing, 24 carries, 156 yards for one touchdown. Nick Davis will hopefully try to return this. Again, Indiana kicking with the win, and Nick the Quick uh, going to have to down it again. A couple yards deeper this time, almost same spot. So the Badgers now will start it's deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra would say. They start from their own 20-yard line. Well, they came out, tried to come out with a, right out of the box with a big play in the last series. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that they'll probably come back to their bread and butter and keep this one on the ground. Try and get a couple yards, stay in po positive yardage. There you see Jerome Pettis in the backfield. And Pettis gets to the outside and advances the ball to the 26, maybe even the 27-yard line. Pettis coming in, 37 carries, 144 yards, just shy of four yards a carry. We didn't really get a chance to show you the Indiana defense, but then they did a nice job against the Badgers in their first drive up front for Indiana. We'll get to that maybe the next play. Second and three for the Badger offense. Bollinger, Pettis, ran into his own man, stays on his feet, and it's going to be stopped shy of the necessary yardage for the first down. It's going to be third and two. And that's too bad because there was a big hole there, and if Jerron keeps his head up and doesn't run into his offensive lineman, he's scooting through for a first down. Jonathan Klinkscale, he's playing right guard right now, took his man, and the, and the rule on the draws is to take your man where he wants to go, let the holes develop. Bob Doherty checks in at tight end. Very quickly take a look at the people up front. The backers. Third and one. Here comes the blitz. They doink it outside. Chad Coons dislodged. That ball is loose. And it's going to be the rule incomplete or is it a fumble? Chad Coons is still down on the 30-yard line. He took a whooping. As soon as he touched it, the Indiana defender was right there, and Chad Coons is taking the necessary, the standard eight count. Well, I'm going to say he got the wind knocked out of him because he's outstretched, and just as he starts to turn around, he takes a pop right in the chest. Boom. Well, I think that might have been a fumble. <clears throat> Laying the wood with Sherrard Wallace. Wallace has done a heck of a job. The deep cover on Lee Evans. There's been two big plays for this defense, and both of them have been at the hands of him. Just a, a great hit, a guy playing a responsibility, playing out in the flat. Chad doesn't get a chance to touch the ball very often, and nobody feels worse about that one than he does. But Good to see that he is running off the field under his own power. You talk about momentum shift. Well, and the worst part about that is, the, well, obviously he dropped the ball, but that would have been a first down. 
So again, three and out for the offense. Indiana ranks last in the Big Ten in scoring defense, allowing 30 points a game. A low line drive kick because Munden is booting into the win, and Indiana's going to come out with pretty darn good field position. They're going to spot it at the spot it at the 44 yard line. 27 yard kick. Now it's tough because uh, Munden is kicking into a I'm going to say 15 mile an hour win. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And he had some pressure late there. So the young kicker, you never know what he sees out of the corner of his eye when he's trying to get that kickoff. Well, speaking of young, a young Wisconsin team. Let's see how they uh, can perhaps mature very quickly under some very adverse conditions. They have not gotten out of the gate fast at all. Badger defense down seven zip. Here's a huge hole gaping into the secondary and it's going to go all the way for a touchdown. 56 yard run by the Indiana offense. Williams exploded. The Badger defense was back on their heels and the fans are back on their fannies because they can't believe what they're seeing. Four plays, two touchdowns. Levron Williams has carried the ball twice, has not been touched by a Badger. Two plays, two touchdowns. Well, you see the coach say, I don't know what happened there. I mean, there was a huge Ricky hole. Robertson into the point after. I don't know if the Badgers defensive line was running a stunt and it, they just got him on it or... Well, Indiana's problems continue to uh, show themselves. Here's the old Bronx cheer as they yeah. missed the point after. Robertson, he was three of three. Well, here's the play, a simple draw. Wendell Bryant takes the outside, and that's right where Levron Williams goes. He cuts back, and Bose is not going to be able to catch him. All he sees is back of his shoes. And that is not the physical defense that Wisconsin has played, especially the last two weeks. I mean, this experienced offensive line was rated third in the country in the preseason. But uh, they are in four plays. They've absolutely dominated so far. And that's right at the heart, right up the middle. Boy, you talk about a reversal of fortunes. Like we said, 59 nothing a couple of years ago. And now the home team's trailing 13 zip and uh, with each score Indiana gets more and more confidence and that's in three minutes and 25 seconds that's the good news <laughs> time is your talent, ally. Right. time is your ally and as we said Indiana's defense well here's what we've seen of this Badger this young Badger team so far this year when they're ahead they play extremely well and they're tough to tough to beat. But when they get down, and I'll go back to the Fresno State game, the second half of that game, Fresno State comes out at half and puts two quick scores on them, and Wisconsin's never able to recover. This is the beginning of the game. Let's see what kind of backbone they've developed since that game. Adam Brocker, who's had uh, two kickoffs, this being the third one, has yet to have one return. Again, he's got that huge wind in his back. The whirling winds, swirling winds. Down on the stadium turf, blows the ball off the tee. And now he's going to have to get somebody to hold it for him. You get two shots, the third one, you're getting one of your special teamers to hold it for you, and that's going to be Wallace. The Badgers got to like to see that. That's one less guy yeah. going downfield on coverage. Brocker hangs it high and hangs it deep. And Davis is 0 for 3, and Brocker is 3 for 3. The cop is down in the end zone, brought out to the 20 yard line. First and 10, Wisconsin. Bollinger drops out onto the field, and the offense is in need of a jump start. They need a little spark. They need something good to happen right here. They need to get a first down, is what they need to do, and move the chains. As I said, that Indiana's defense ranks last in scoring defense, allowing 30 points a game. Bollinger sacked. He never had a chance. There had to be a bust in the offensive line there. I mean, they were coming after him. Well, the guy who missed him was Jerron Pettis. I mean, Brooks never had a chance. He's still dropping before he even gets his feet set and he's tackled. There you see him miss. You see it real Justin quick. Justin Smith came in on the blitz. Linebacker, grad student at IU. He 
graduated on that play with honors. Well, there's four grad students here on this Indiana team playing today. That's his sixth tackle for loss. Second and 18. Stretch play. Pettis across the 15. And I think he got a piece of the sideline. They mark it at the 17-yard line. Now, guess what? It's third and 13. Not exactly the kind of situation you want if you're Brian White. <laughs> Roderick Williams checks in. They're bringing in three wides. You know, third and 13 is a tough, tough distance to call a play on. There you see the proficiency how Wisconsin has improved on third downs. So far, they're 0 of 2 today. Does Indiana come with a blitz? Here they come. And it's caught. First and 10. Fumble. And they're going to say Evans fumbled it. It's Indiana's ball. Well, when you see something like that, they get the ball to the right guy in Lee Evans. I mean, that's the guy who's been making plays for you all year. Here, here's what I'm seeing right now out of this Wisconsin offense. They are asleep. A guy, your leaders out there are making mistakes. Was it a fumble or not? Well, we'll see what we can show you here. Plenty of time. Good, good throw. throw. Good catch. That's a strip. That's a heck of a play. Justin Smith made the strip against Evans. Randall L. He's going for the juggler. He's got all sorts of time. He lost it up there. And it is caught. I'm telling you what, this Wisconsin offense and defense, they're shell-shocked right now. Yeah, they're during the headlights. They have not been able to, to get off the, get off the field here. Made a nice catch. He juggled a little bit. That's his fifth catch. You're going to see defensive coordinator Kevin Cosgrove. You see guys make a play. What, that's what he's signaling in. Well, you see the coaches there. At this point, most of the time, they're screaming and hollering, but they don't even know what's going on right now. They can't, they can't understand it either. Williams almost got into the secondary again. He Williams got into it, but he didn't get beyond it. Wrapped up by Mike Eccles. Well, what I'm seeing is this offensive line just taking charge of this yeah. game. Erasmus James is just peeling himself off the ground right now. The left tackle for Indiana was just beating them down even after the play pushing them into the ground I mean and, and those are the kind of things when you're up 13 nothing early in a game if you're on defense right now you got to get get a big play here to turn this around Indiana lost to Ohio State 27 14 last Saturday it's going to be first in goal Johnson, the ball carry. after Johnson gets inside the five yard line boy oh boy you're down 13 zip 945 Smith made the sound in the first quarter and you're back on your heels and you're facing possibly a 20 or 21 to nothing deficit. And Indiana is not a powerhouse by any means. They're 0-3 coming into today. Oh, great second effort. Took the licking but kept on ticking. Williams, I mean, he lowered the shoulder. He says, you want to thump me? I'll thump you back. Williams gets his second touchdown in Indiana is on top 19 to nothing 932 to go in the first quarter and he put that lick on Nick Grayson he just ran him over Robertson in to attempt the point after he's one of two make it two of three and the kick in is Indiana in front of a shell shocked Camp Randall Stadium has moved on top 20 to nothing following the fumble on third down by Lee Evans. So they took advantage. They actually took it away from Wisconsin on the takeaway. And we're lucky that it hasn't been two takeaways with the Chad Coons drop, maybe a fumble. You're going to see this play. Levron Williams, he's 223 pounds and he just beats up on Grayson. Low man wins right there. Grayson stopped in the hole instead of running through the guy. And that's not what we're used to seeing here. 
Grison squats down and tries to take the, take the blow instead of deliver it, and that's usually what happens. And Grison's one of the best. Well, you wonder now if you see a change of quarterback. You're down 20 to zip. You can't be chunking the ball up and down the field now. you you got to be throwing it, although they are throwing into the wind. They were expecting to see, or we were expecting to see, Jim Sorge perhaps on the fourth possession, but I'm sure that Barry Alvarez didn't expect his ball club to be down 20 to zip on their fourth possession. Well, Brooks is the one with his helmet strapped on down there, and Sorge, he's got his hands in his uh, hand warmer. So I think we're going to see Brooks again. But I'll tell you what, this field is completely tilted. The Badgers have a tough uphill battle at this point. Rocker going for the grand slam. He's got it. Rocker's kickoff goes through the end zone, brought out to the 20. Well, <laughs> Mama said there'd be days like this, so now you've got to rally the forces. Like I said, the nice thing is you got three and three quarters a game ahead of you. I was going to say, I think I thought we just went through this <laughs> a couple minutes back. There's five minutes, five minutes and 32 seconds into the game, and there's a 20, 20 point deficit for the Badgers. And that's not a lot of running room for Broderick Williams. Broderick now, Williams keeping in mind, if Davis doesn't play, you got. Your number one tailback, your backup tight end who aren't playing today because of injuries. Tony Pichotti was injured in an auto crash. Turf toe from Anthony Davis, the leading ground gainer, one of the leaders in the country. But there you see the guys that got to do it. Yeah, it's got it's on the shoulders of these offensive linemen right now. Because right now there's no holes up there for the running backs. If you're Indiana, through. you can really tee off too. Yeah. Send everybody. Here's the option. Well, they see that every day in, in practice. Yeah, you're not going to catch them. And off while balance. Bollinger runs the option well, he doesn't compare to Randall L. in terms of the way he runs the option. Yeah, and it's nothing against uh, Brooks. It's no. just An Antoine Randall L. It's the type of player he is. Get him in the open where he can use his feet. Darren Charles is going to check in. Chad Coons is going to check out, and it's third and eight so far. The Badgers 0 of 3 on third down opportunities. And the crowd is completely silent. They don't even know what's going on right now. From the spread, here comes the blitz from the outside. Bollinger steps up, scrambles, hit from behind. And it looks like he only had one seam he was trying to go downfield to, and that was Darren Charles, and he was covered. Well, Michael Haney, he's playing cornerback, and he comes off the top. He was at the top of the screen, and he gets blocked for a second, but then he chases Brooks down from behind and ends up with the tackle. I mean, if my starting quarterback is running back punts, I don't know. Well, I want him back there. Here they come. Block. Indiana's going for it all. They're going to get another touchdown. A block punt, and it's 26 zip. 732 to go in the first quarter. I just had a feeling they're gonna come send the whole the whole outfit. Well they've had pressure before and they get it right there. Usually Indiana's the team getting kicks blocked this season. And now they've been Brian Lewis. Well they come out with this offset uh, extra point attempt uh, the way it's going right now. Well, here they come. I, I would have thought they would have tried to fake it because everything has worked for them so far. And there you see him. Doesn't get much easier than that. The kick's no good again. He <laughs> whiz. <laughs> the point after is no good by Robertson. And Bobby Brandt, the right tackle, number 71, gets up a little slow for them. I have a feeling he might be done for the day for PITs. <laughs> of course, it's 26 zip. Yeah, you don't need him at this point. Well, in my many years of covering football, I've never seen 26 points put on the board in a little over seven and a half minutes. Well, I don't know what to tell you. It's, uh, it looks like men playing against a bunch of boys right now. I mean, nothing that Wisconsin has done so far has worked. 
I mean, the coaches are stunned right there. They don't know what's going on. Adam Brocker's out there to kick it off again. Nick Davis hasn't even had a chance to take one out of the end zone. Brocker to kick off. Well, the end. uh. Nick Davis, Michael Broussard, beat for the Badger. <laughs> What do it's you time do? to go into your bag of tricks here. Now, do you think we see Jim Sorgi? Well, he just took his hat off. I don't know if he's going to put it back on. No, this one is not going to be returned. Touch back in the end zone, and Rockets Wisconsin from their own 20. Zone, Brooks is the man. I think they, they just want to see a couple plays back-to-back -back work. I mean, there's... <laughs> don't worry about changing quarterbacks. They just have to get some positive yardage. And you see the confidence of the of this Indiana defense just oh they're they, sending everybody what? Their, their heads don't even fit in their helmets right now I mean everything has gone their way here they come <laughs> now that time maybe trying to cut it inside Pettis would have been better served to go to the outside number 44 Baker with his stop well, no gain the stretch the play they've ran that play three times today that's the first time Indiana stopped it now watch him. He tried to cut it back up inside. Oh, oh, oh. And Jamil Frank, along with Brandon Baker, there to make the stop. And that's a defensive tackle running all the way down the field, down the line of scrimmage, making that play. Bollinger. And that's on Brooks. He, he had more than four seconds. But it, as the way it's gone so far, you can't blame him for wanting to pull the ball down. Here he is. Gets a drop. Doesn't see his man. Maybe steps up a little early. Looked like there were pretty good blocks up there. You think they're going to be sending everybody in the farm now? Why not? Third and a dozen. The Badgers 0 or 4 on third down. They're going to sprint him outside. He goes upfield. Incomplete looking for Mark Anelli. Anelli tried to go up with one hand to pull it down. A little high. And it's three and out. Munden back in. Now if you're Indiana, you know, you don't need to go up for the blocking set up field position now. Yeah, just now it's like practice. Just work on your technique. I mean, but they're lining up the same way they did last time. Straight up the middle. Money. Heck of a kick. Into the wind, no less. Randall right up the gut. There he goes. Whoa. And he advanced the ball to the 45 yard line. 51 yard kick into the wind by Munden. Russ Kills with a stop. Well, we talked in our opening, the best weapon against Antoine Randall else keeping him off the field. But when you turn the ball over, Ball's marked on the 46 yard line, first and 10, Indiana. You don't need to put him on the field. The Hoosiers start from their own 46 yard line. That's a pretty graphic number. Randall L. He going for a home run. And that is going to be incomplete. No. He wanted to call it a completion, but the old Bronx cheer. It's the first thing they've had to cheer about since the kickoff. And Scott Starks again. He's playing on the outside, and he gets a little lucky here because Travis Haney almost did it to him again. This is an area that Randall Ellis really improved his ability to throw the ball. This ball is that's, right there. I mean, that's basically a catch. Yeah, Haney's got to catch that. That's a heck of a throw. And that's the same play. We've seen it three times in this game, twice from Indiana. Better just get lucky there. Randall L. And a little miscommunication. He's looking for Haney again, and he kind of got. Hawk tied there. He couldn't move up the field. Yeah, they had two wide receivers on that side of the field, and I think uh, everybody kind of ran into each yeah. other. 
Cam Cameron's had everything go his way. So much for, you know, him being on the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> Just got a lot cooler. Third and ten. Let me see what they've done on the season. This is their first third down play of the game. Manalel. It's going to be a hold. Whatever happens, this play is coming back. Whatever happens, this play is coming back, fortunately. Well, fortunately, but I'll tell you what, that play does to the Badgers' defense again. It's a big play. Randall L. doesn't get touched until he's tackled, until he's brought down, and he only gets brought down because he kind of loses his feet trying to cut back to the inside. Cam Cameron is not real happy, and you can understand why. You know, penalty or not, Badgers just got gashed on that play. And uh, on third and ten, that's not what you want to see. Illegal block. Today's officials, Jim Lapatina, Jim Krogstead. Push to the foul. Hands to the face on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous ride. We'll keep third down. Well, that's a, a break. You'll take it. Whatever. You need something that you can build on. Watch to the left side. Oh, that was a face mask on yeah. Delonte McGrew. A little bit of mask there. When a guy's trying well, to spin, burn face mask. That's right. When a guy's trying to spin and his whole body just stops because he got his face, that's uh, pretty obvious. And there's a referee, a line judge, just sitting there waiting to throw that flag on there. So, lucky break for the Badgers. And it's from the point of the foul, third and 25, and Indiana will take a timeout. Well, we'll Later this month, be sure to join us when the football Badgers entertain the Michigan State Spartans right here from Camp Randall Stadium. The Badgers, of course, go on the road for two straight Saturdays before they come back home again. Saturday, October 27th at 10 p.m. right here on Wisconsin Public Television, Wisconsin and Michigan State. Michigan State, they have a pretty neat thing happening this weekend up at their place, up in East, East Lansing. There's a hockey game going to be played in their Spartan football State, stadium. Yeah. They had a pretty neat thing happen to them last week, too, against Northwestern. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bizarre. We are here somewhere. Fantastic finish. Big, big home win for Randy Walker's Northwestern Wildcats. You know it's not a good game when they start showing us from the field. <laughs> And it's early, so you still got a chance. All they wanted to see is see if you still had your tie on. It's still there. Okay. A little looser, but uh, it's still there. Uh, I bet you Barry's a little bit tighter right now. Well, I don't know if he's ever seen anything like this. He, I guarantee he's never seen anything like this to one of his teams. He talked about the value of the offensive line. Randall L has been well protected. Let's see what happens here. Third and 25, following the timeout. Here comes the screen play. And the Badgers stop it, making the stop. Number 42, Ben Herbert. And for the first time, we're going to see Brian Robertson, the punter, come out. Well, I'm not sure it is going to be Brian no. Robertson. I think it's Adam Brocker. <laughs> or it could be J.R. Drummond. It's by committee. No, it's not Robertson. Kicking with the win. And that's not a very good kick, although they get a very, very favorable bounce. I believe that was J.R. Drummond. The putter's down at the 22 yard line. Hammer. First in the wow. <laughs> They're already putting their scrubs in. <laughs> That's Hammer's first <laughs> one of the year. And Brooks is still our quarterback. So what do you call here? I mean, uh, if I'm Barry Alvarez, I'm going back to the basics. Throws to his tight end. I'm sick that that was Coons. Chad Coons. Chad Coons. Makes the reception. That's his second catch of the year. He's only got one carry. 
Well, and when things are going bad, you go to the guys that have done it for you before. Coons has been around a long time, blocked for Ron Dane for a few years. Get him out in the flat and get him a nice ball. A simple play, yeah. too, that allows you a chance for some success. Give you some confidence. Now it's second and one versus second and 10, second and 12. Free play. Wasn't a very free one. I think they'll take the penalty, huh? I think so. I think there was contact in the neutral zone by the defensive Final lineman line. for Indiana. So no doubt Wisconsin will take the penalty. And that's going to be their first first down of the game. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Offside. And it comes off the penalty. Yeah. But again, that's two, <laughs> two flags that have helped up the Badgers. One on defense and one on offense now. The crowd has something to cheer about. <laughs> By the way, Indiana's defensive line coach is uh, Dyron Reynolds, who's the older brother of Jamal Reynolds. Happened to be the number one pick of the Green Bay Packers. Pettis, fumble. Man, when it rains, it pours. And right now, Wisconsin is in the middle of a thunderstorm. Wow. Uh, that's a bread and butter play, a stretch play. That is the first fumble of the year. Our second fumble, I believe, against the Wisconsin offense. I mean, it's a good play right to the end. Pettis tucked that ball away, gets a helmet put right on the ball. Sherrod Wallace, we've called his name a few times yeah, already. Have. I think this is the third big play he's had today. Puts his helmet right on the ball and just pops it out of there. Boom. Right between his knees. No question about that one. Well, how good is this field position? From the Badger 42-yard line and about a nine-yard gain by Williams. That is just the second fumble in about 235 rushing attempts this year. Boy, it couldn't have come at a more inopportune yeah, time. exactly. I mean, if you're a coach down there for the Badgers, what do you tell your guys? <laughs> and it's too long to get into the locker room at halftime to make some adjustments. Here comes the option. Pitch back. Man, and, and, you know, look at Indiana. Williams lowers his shoulder. He takes the hit. He stays on his feet. The Badger defender goes down. And Indiana is not a physical football team. This is not a team that has come out and just dominated anybody for a long time. And yeah. They've almost been over a year without a win. <laughs> and right now, they look like the best team in the country. If you didn't see the first half and see the turn or first part of this first quarter and see the turnovers, you would not know that Indiana hadn't had a win in almost a year. Randall L., look at this. Joey Bose, and they're going to get a flag against Wisconsin. That's going to send it half the distance to the goal line. Wisconsin is totally discombobulated right here. They're, they've just come apart at the seams. Good execution. Two defenders kind of got tangled there. And then they get a flag after the catch. Well, and that's a good play for Indiana because Randall L., you have to respect Face him. Face mask by Bose right into your living room. You have to respect his option ability so he goes down the line a little bit and then drops back and Bose bites on it there you see the face mask inadvertent all right now you're 26 zip you've got your defense backed up the inside of its five yard line flag flies Randall L Touchdown, wide open, Aaron Halderman in the end zone. There is a flag on the play. And as I'm sitting here watching that play develop, there are five Badgers in between Randall L. and the receiver. And the touchdown's going to stand. On a defense, they had 12 men on the field at the snap. Well, they refused. Touchdown. Now you're making physical mistakes compounded by mental mistakes. Well, <laughs> you're 32 zip. zip. I guess you've got to stick with 
your point after guy, even though he's had a rough, rough start. Robertson shaking his head before he even kicks the ball. I don't ball. Even know that I want to kick this. Yeah. He's missed two already. Here's a bad. The holder never got that. That was a wounded duck. That's the holder's fault. And the pick is no good. Let's give Ron Hamden. And you know, a backup court. Watch this. This is this is just you can't blame Robertson on that. Watch watch the holder now. Oh man, that thing has a line drive shot. Robert, I'd be looking back at my guy, say, hey coach, I can't do anything there. Lace is out. Well, at this point, 32 to nothing. It's not even the end of the first quarter. There's three minutes and 13 seconds left. And it's, it's somebody dropped a bomb in here, and it's uh, the Badgers are scattered all over the place. Well, you see some obviously shocked students there. I'm sure they didn't expect. I'm sure they probably were hoping <laughs> to be 32 nothing on the home team, especially in view of the fact that it was 59 nothing here a couple of years ago. Well, I don't think Cam Cameron even thought it would be like this. I think we're going to get a return here. Davis, one yard deep. That flag hit Nick Davis. That flag hit Nick Davis. I think he's going to get an illegal block in the back. Well, Nick should have caught that flag and put it in his pocket. <laughs> there it is. He, he bounced around with it for a couple steps. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, you said you get, gonna... you get something good, and then it's all of a sudden something bad. <laughs> and Nick's hurting a little bit. Holding on the receivers. Half the distance to the goal line. Half First down. The to the goal line. That's from the point of the infraction. See if we can see it here. Holy smokes. And you I know. saw this. I saw this develop. Now watch the flag. It, it hits Nick Davis in the jersey. Well, it was it happened at the bottom oh, left of your screen. The block that they called it on, and we couldn't see the first contact on it. All we saw was the finish. And the guy who threw that flag was 30 yards from the play. I He's don't know if I'm eyes. throwing. Yeah, I don't know if I'm eyes. throwing flags 30 yards away. Roderick Williams running hard has a first down. And I'm going to call that their first one because that's really the first one they earned. That's their first first down without the aid of a penalty. Hill <laughs> blocks here again. And that's good to see Broderick out there shedding off tacklers and getting his feet in the ground and earning some good yards, 10 yards on that carry. Bob Doherty, a true freshman out of Oshkosh North, checks into the lineup. Stretch play. Williams run out of bounds by Justin Smith stops the clock with 226 in the first quarter. And if you're rubbing your eyes, well, you should. It's 32 to nothing in the end. Now, you know, Wisconsin this year has not scored more than 28 points in a game. Second and eight. I'll take any points right now. They haven't got it, gotten into Indiana territory yet. Rhodes follows his pass complete to Lee Evans. Tripped up on third down, Justin and Smith. I'm going to say no gain there. And now you're in third and long. They had a good play, they just couldn't get the blocks. We had to avoid two tacklers and actually avoided one and got tackled by the second. And Brooks has been in the game the whole first quarter. They haven't gone to Sorge yet. Miles is going to try to run. Stop short. And that's on Brooks. That's absolutely on Brooks. A lot of room to run out there. 
and he tries to avoid a couple tacklers, and he turns back inside. He's got to put his shoulder down and well, earn, you got to earn the first down. The fans here are saying go for it. And it, it looks and like they're going for it. That's a heck of a call by Barry Alvarez. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, no, I agree. You know, I think it's a heck of a call. He's got nothing to lose at this point. Fourth down conversions have not been particularly kind to Wisconsin this year. Two of nine coming in. They try to draw them off sides here. Bollinger, look out! In the Indiana territory, down the sidelines. And he was already out of bounds, and he got a late push. Now, where's the laundry on that play? Yeah, Joe Gonzalez, number 25 for Indiana, gives him a little shove. A He's good, out of bounds. Good, good couple feet out of bounds. But I don't think the refs were expecting this play to work. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it's been going. Now, okay, watch. He's out of bounds right, right there. Yeah. And he got a, it wasn't a vicious shove by Gonzalez, but nevertheless. Hey, that's two hands. That's a big push when you're going full speed. It's hard to keep your balance. The Badgers are in IU territory. There you see it. That's a very clear view of it. Here comes a blitz. Badgers pick it up. Bollinger scrambles, unloads. He's running for his life. I mean, hey, it's an all-out blitz at that point. He's got one man downfield. Second out. That was a jailbreak. You know, it's bad when you got one guy chasing you right away, but it's really bad when you got two, and that's what happened. Second and ten following the incompletion. Bollinger three of seven so far for 30 yards. Carrying the ball. Bollinger's eight for 28. The leading ground gainer so far for the Badger offense. And this first quarter is almost over. That could be the best news so far. Delay, Broderick Williams to the outside. Oh, man, just tripped up by Gonzalez. Go Gonzalez makes a good play to step up and makes an arm tackle. And Broderick, uh, maybe because his knee his knee surgery, maybe he's not 100%, yeah. but he you, just... You didn't see a lot of sprint speed there. Yeah, there wasn't a big burst through the hole, which, you, which you're used to seeing with Badger backs. And and he makes he makes the right move, but again, the burst wasn't there to get him free. Wisconsin is going to let time expire, and the first quarter has fortunately ended. And I'm sure that Barry Alvarez, that's the good news. The first quarter is now behind them. The bad news is Wisconsin is on the long end of a 32 to nothing deficit. Vance now, Jamie Vandevelt back for the second quarter. That is not a mirage. That is not a final. That is the good news. That's one quarter. It's one quarter. There's Anthony Davis, and uh, he's over on the sideline, and that's even more bad news. You've got one of the top ground gainers in the country, and uh, he's not playing because of turf, though. So you got to pull yourself up by your old bootstraps. Bollinger looks upfield. There's a flag in the secondary. There is a reception on the field. It's going to be a first down as Davis hauls in the pass. Flag on the play. I believe they might get a defensive hold in the secondary, but I'm going to let the officials make the call. Yeah, let's not jump to any conclusions at this point, the way it's going right now. You see Jim Lapatina, he's also talking to Jim Crockstead, who happens to be, lives here in Madison. There's Cam Cameron. I think he had 12 guys. Illegal participation on the defense. They had 12 men on the line at the snap. Not at the That's line, but at the been. snap. 15 yards penalty from the previous <laughs> spot. Enough yards. Well, First now down. that we've got that figured out, yeah. let Wisconsin play with a dozen, okay? 
Well, they got another first down. That's a heck of a play by Bollinger. You complete the ball, and they got 12 guys on the field, huh? I mean, come on. Accentuate the positives here. Good throw, good catch, and now they're they're close to the red zone with the penalty. Wisconsin has been very prolific in the red zone there. Williams trying to bounce to the outside. Not a lot of bounce there by the Indiana defense. Bethel makes a stop out of Louisville, Kentucky. And the guy who made the play, though, even though he didn't make the tackle, was number 99, Derek Barnett. He's a defensive end. And after his tight end just goes down in a combination block with uh, the left tackle, all he does is put his head down, and he comes right at the running back, and he just clongs up the hole. You know, coming in, opposing quarterbacks had completed 69% of their passes against this Hoosier secondary. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle, a little inside pitch to Lee Evans. Lee Evans. And you got a big play waiting to de waiting to develop. Uh, excuse me, develop. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Brooks is about to get hit. He tosses the ball to Lee Evans. And Ray Schaefer tripped him up. And he kind of fumbled it himself. And right there, Dan Benning, number 67, just isn't able to stay on his block long enough to get him free. Well, but I think Evans might have been able to get there a little bit quicker if he didn't have didn't have to wait for Brooks to pitch the ball. Yeah. Third and four so far. The Badgers, 0 of six. Inside the 20. Bollinger. Good pitch. Good catch. Good first down. Bollinger. Anelli inside the 10. Anelli out of bounds at the six and a half yard line. Well, on this drive, and this drive goes back into the first quarter, the end of the first quarter, all we've seen the Badgers do so far is go to the guys that have gotten them here. Go to the guys that have been around. That play, they go to Anelli play before that they go to Lee Evans play before that it's Nick Davis and earlier in the drive it's Chad Coons it's guys who have been here the guys stepping up to try and make a play and try and salvage something Williams the lone setback cuts inside the five bounces off attacker down inside the three yard line good run that time by Broderick Williams he saw the hole and just put his head down nice tough run runs through a couple of guys before he's brought down before today, he only had five carries on the year. Williams, you're, he, here's your third string tailback, no less. Wisconsin is going to use a timeout, which, you know, you don't want to muff things up here. You've had a fumble by Pettis. Uh, you had Evan stripped of the ball. Uh, Coons was was chopped down. Fortunately, it wasn't a rule to fumble. I mean, just about everything that's gone wrong, that could have gone wrong, has in fact gone wrong. So the last thing you want to do is make a mental mistake or a physical mistake down inside the five-yard line. And again, these turnovers are coming from a defense in Indiana that hadn't had a turnover all year. It's not a physical team that comes out and just hits you hard and strips the ball. And, it's a totally different situation yeah. today. Since their last victory, which, by the way, came on October 21st against the Minnesota Golden Gophers, Indiana had inter intercepted just one pass. They have no interceptions in three games this year. Coming in, uh, Indiana ranked last in the Big Ten in third down defense, allowing opponents to convert nearly 50% of their third down opportunities, and the Badgers are one of seven. Well, and that third down conversion stat is one that you can go to in pretty much any game to tell you who won the game, yeah. because if you're up towards 50%, chances are you're not gonna be, if you're on offense with 50% conversion, you're gonna be winning a lot of games. If you're on defense, you're gonna be walking, walking away with a lot of losses. Second and three, second goal from the three for Brooks Bollinger and company. Oh, man. Bollinger loses two. Got to the five and no more. And the ball's on the carpet again, but they're calling him down. Well, Indiana actually was in the hands of Dominique Smith. Loss of two on the play. Puts the ball the now it's third and five. Third and goal. Indiana did a very nice job to make sure that Bollinger didn't go down the line and have a chance to pitch the ball. They see this in practice every day. Yeah. You know, 
You're not going to fool him on that. And now we have third and five or third and goal actually. Evans Davis split to the far side. Charles Braun to the near side. Slant and thrown behind Evans. Now you got decision time for your Alvarez because guess what? What's three points going to do you when you're down 32 to zip? Fourth and goal. Well, three points it is. He went for it fourth and one inside his own 30 yard line, 35 yard line, if you will. Mark Noiser, who hit on his first ever field goal last Saturday against Western Kentucky. Swords of the ball handler, a high snap. The kick is up. And the Badgers are on the board. Well, three's better than a goose egg. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's better than a goose egg. That should be Mark Noiser with an in. That's kind of the way things are going here today, huh? And Noiser stepped in last week against Western Kentucky to earn special teams player of the week for the Badgers. So Onside the... kick it. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Onside kick it. <laughs> well, you got the win. Kick it deep and see what happens. Yeah, but you know what? Indiana's got a, per uh, a very good tandem between A.C. Carter and Levron Williams. Carter ranks second in the Big Ten, 25th nationally. 26.7 yards per return. Levron Williams, third in the Big Ten, 25.8 yards per return. So you got a couple of weapons down there, whether you got the wind at your back or not. It's back to the basics, though. <laughs> Kick it deep, cover your lanes, get off tackles, or get off blocks and make the tackle. Students holding up the keys, a key play as you take a look at where Wisconsin will be in the old horseshoe. Illinois at Indiana, Iowa at Michigan State, Minnesota Northwestern, Purdue at Michigan. Noiser, as we said, Carter Williams have been unbelievable. And Indiana's going to get a return. Carter, Downing had him, let him run away. Oh, look at this. And there's a late flag. Carter on the return. Brought down by Mark Carter Morrison. was following Levron Williams out uh, in front of him, getting a block for him, and I think Williams just held on to his man a little too long. It's going to get called with a flag here for holding. Right in front of the Indiana bench. One of the few things that Indiana has not done well. There's Cam Cameron saying. I don't know what he's complaining about. Well, he's saying, you know, it's after the play was over. Holding by the return team. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that knocks Indiana back to their own 25 yard line. There's a guy working the ref, and uh, he needs something good to happen to him in his winless ball club. Of course, when you got a guy like this, and he's got a 32 to 3 lead, it hasn't been all bad for the visiting Hoosiers. At least at this game. The ball carrier, Wendell Bryant. Wendell Bryant, Delante McGrew at the bottom of the pile against one number of the five, Williams. Well, here you see on this play the fullback, Jeremy Johnson, who might be one of the best fullbacks in the country. He's 5'11, 255 pounds, and you're going to see him put a block on Wendell Bryant, Wendell Bryant and just blow him up into the tackle. <laughs> you see the tail end of that there. Now, Johnson. I tell you what, he's he's a great uh, ad for Weight Watchers. He came to IU at 290. That's a lot of beef. That's a big boy. Quarterback draw. Randall L. No. Well, now Wisconsin defense. The stop made there by the Big Ten's leading tackler, Nick Bryson. And number 70, Demar, the right guard for Indiana, just isn't able to keep Nick all locked up. And Nick does a great job of shedding the block downfield, coming up and making a play. This is. The last couple minutes are things we're used to seeing from the Badgers. Indiana led the Big Ten in rushing offense last year, 266 yards per game. Third and eight. Oh, one for IU's offense on third down. Randall L looks one way. And incomplete pass. 
And they had it. Yeah, they did. They had a nice line of offensive linemen there out to block. He catches that ball. I don't even want to say it. <laughs> and and Grison was going to be blocked on that play, too. Yep. The thing you saw there were a couple of younger defensive linemen for the Badgers getting the backfield free. You saw an experienced Wendell Bryant turn around and, and sniff it out, but it was a little too oh, late. This is a nasty looking punt. Might be the last punt by Ryan Hammer. Uh, Hammer time for him. <laughs> Wisconsin. He's kicking into the wind. 19 yard boot. I'm telling you, if I'm Cam Cameron, I'm firing my special teams coach right now. Well, they can get put, on the bus. You're going back to Bloomington right now. Well, they can put Randall L back there because he has punted yes, for him before. Yes, he has. I mean, why not? Put your best player on the field. Let him <laughs> kick it. He can't do any worse. He's got the best per kick average He's of got 35 three punts, yards. Yeah. He's got it's, the best on your team. Can't say, wow, this is bad stuff here. It's <laughs> nasty win, I know, but this is ridiculous. Pettis back in the backfield now for Wisconsin. Oh, man. And Bollinger is finally getting up. He's uh, plastered on the motion W there at midfield. You know, I might be deep six in the option right now because this ball club from Indiana sees it day in and day out. Yeah, and we haven't got him on it at all no, today. No, Although on fourth and one, they did. One, one time. Play. <laughs> one time, one yard. No, that was a big play there. Remember, that's where he ran into. Oh, that's right. That's right. Second and 11. Little razzle dazzle. Ervis is wide open. Touchdown. Unbelievable. The old throwback. Davis to Bollinger. Bollinger to Evans. And Barry dusts off the gadget book, and it's long overdue. Well, and this play takes about 10 seconds to develop. <laughs> Evans I mean, had to wait. One hand off, two hands off. Pitch it back to Brooks. You're women have had this. children in the amount of time that it took for this ball to come There's down. One. Three guys touch the ball before Brooks even throws it. And Bro Lee Evans is open downfield. Yeah. He Brooks, had to wait for the ball. And it's almost knocked out of his hands by Joe Gonzalez, a strong safety. I mean, Wisconsin got lucky there because that play did take so long to develop. Lee was so wide open, it gave those guys time to recover. Onside kick it. I'm telling you, onside kick it. And we've been down, obviously. We've been knocked back in our seats a little bit. 32, it was 32 to nothing before we got three points, and now it's 10 to 32. But the key was Wisconsin got so far down with so much time left. This game isn't over. No. And, you know, let's statistically, Indiana's defense we'll look at it again indiana's defense is not noted for being very strong van they gave up in the last two weeks were the first two t first time in a couple of years that they've given up less than 30 points back to back that's a bulletin point in their their uh statistical uh handout i mean what does that tell you <laughs> these guys are getting gashed for points well and lee does a great job of concentrating yeah. on the ball because he got hit just as it got there well, that helps to atone for his earlier strip. But, you know, Wisconsin incrementally, let's face it, it's still 32 to yeah. 10. You're down by three touchdowns and then a point to boot. There you see the play, the scoring drive. <laughs> well, you plays. need lots of those. <laughs> well, that, that looks like the scoring drives from Indiana in the first quarter. I mean, that's that's how they got up so fast. Onside kick, here we go. Mark Noiser. Here we go, onside kick. You gotta take advantage. I don't, I'm not sure they're thinking. You know, you kick them with a win. A little plonk it right down there, you know. Go. You got a dangerous tandem in Carter and Williams. So you kick it short. So it's Carter to the near sideline. And he gets to the 23 and no more. Well, there's a term out there in special teams, don't out kick your coverage. So I guess Barry's philosophy right now is punch it up in the corner nice and high and let you guys get there just about the same time the ball does. Robert Brooks, a defensive back for Barry Alvarez's special teams. Well, on the last drive, he did a nice job to box up double one Randall L. 
Guess what? The challenge remains. There he goes. He advances to the 30-yard line. And you saw how quick he was right there. He scooted down the line and turned upfield in a blink of an eye. You know, he's 5'10", 194 pounds. And he's not what I would call big enough to be a receiver in the NFL. It could be a special teams player, you know, return man or something like that. Probably not durable enough to be a running back. You can use them all over. Yeah. I mean, as, as good as he's been in college, you'd like to be able to see him continue his career in the next level. Here he goes. Pitch back. Oh, fumble. Still loose. Fought for. And who got it? It's a scramble. A scrum. Well, it's going to be between Jeff Mack and Randall L. That's Indiana's ball. That's the most important thing. That ball was just sitting there like a four-leaf clover, and it was re recovered by Williams. Almost recovered by number five, Williams. Boy, that would have been a nice time for a turnover. Yeah, because this play is there. He catches that ball. There's oh, a lot oh, of room oh. for him to run. See, McGrew goes flying oh. in there, but he didn't see the ball. He was already gone past the, the runner. Third and four as we approach the eight-minute mark. Randall L. from the spread formation. Look out for a quarterback draw here. And going it outside to Johnson. Johnson cuts it back. To midfield, still on his feet. This guy is 255 pounds of a load, and he gets the ball inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Sloppy, extremely sloppy. Indiana does a good job of getting out there. They get some guys out there to block, but there are a lot of broken tackles here. Well, like you said, this guy's one of the most dangerous fullbacks in all of college football. He is. He's, he's a junior, but he's probably the best in the country. One missed tackle. Good Bryson, block there. He's got him. Wrap him up. Scott Starks saves the day right there. Now Scott Starks, you know, soaking wet is 175, <laughs> 170 pounds, and Johnson is 255. That silences the crowd in a hurry. They need a turnover. Randall L. Boy, look at the cushion they give him. This is when this guy Randall is so, keepers. so dangerous. And he didn't even get touched on that play. No. He almost picks up a first down. Line. Just short of a first down, but he didn't even get touched. Those are the kind of plays where you got to put a put a hel helmet on the guy. If you get to him. Yeah. I mean, you don't want him thinking he can run out there all day without getting hit. And Cam Carrington is just this close. Officials are they going to a little bit of measurement here. I think they're going to call for a measurement they have. First down. Well, you, <laughs> a couple of these touchdowns have been set up by offensive miscues by the Badgers, but nonetheless, the defense has to rear up and and make a make a statement here, make a stand. They've got to come up with a takeaway. I don't care how or by what means they need a turnover. Well, and Indiana's offense is fresh. They haven't been on the field very much. It's been one and two plays, and they score. Cut back into the secondary. Inside the 10-yard line is Levron Williams. Well, oh, I tell you, this backfield tandem looks like uh, one of the best in college football. Well, and I'm going to go back to what I said in the very first game of the year. With, with Wisconsin go with some smaller interior defense linemen. When you get in the Big Ten season and your guys are, are starting to get beat up a little bit and you're replacing them with smaller guys, this is what happens because everybody in the Big Ten can run the ball. Well, you got Myler three and a quarter, Oakley 299, Osika 297, DeMar 306, and Brant 298. Randall L. pitch back, cut, touchdown. Well, the Badger comeback has been silenced as Indiana goes the distance. Well, and that's the first time they had a long, sustained drive to go the length of the field. Now look at white jerseys on red jerseys. Ran right by Kareem Timbers, red shirt freshman. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only guy I hadn't played worth a darn. 
Robertson, but the holder <laughs> didn't do his job. There. Yeah. He's going to keep doing it until he gets it right. Good execution this time. And the kick is good. The score, Indiana 39. Indiana 39, Wisconsin 10. At Wisconsin. In other action from around the country on the UWBadgers.com out of town scoreboard in the fourth quarter, Georgia 20. Tennessee 17. Well, critical play in that Virginia drive was the third down Virginia conversion Virginia. when they threw the ball the to Johnson. Quarter, Miami 38, Troy State 7. In Big Ten action in the fourth quarter, Illinois 25, Minnesota 14. Watch number 34. Four, He's following the play, following the play. Oh, going to cut it back. He overpursued. And that's going to happen. It's responsibility football, and everybody has to have a man in this play. Exactly, and last week we saw it with Jose and Broussard out on the flat a lot of the time, just manned up and making plays. This week you got a team that's a little bit bigger, faster. You run and the option a lot better. Exactly, and, and you're seeing what's Rogers happening. Guys are making blocks. Some of the Badgers are missing tackles, but Davis, Indiana's Michael just Broussard, the hitting on all cylinders right now. Well, total offense for the Hoosiers, 271 yards to 155 for the Badgers. Not a bad day's work. Of course, 56 of these yards came on one run. Well, now they're trying to do some stuff to you. And that's Marcanelli. Marcanelli Fields the kickoff, advances it to about the 37-yard line. Well, Indiana figured they'd help the Badgers out with some field position and just Well, pop they're it also up there. kicking into a pretty substantial win, too. Well, Guess what? The offense has got to jack it back up, jack the crowd up. And that's Scott Willie limping off the yeah. field. So if the Badgers start uh, going through some quarterbacks, that might, that might come back into play. Bollinger from the spread. Finds his tight end, and Nelly splits two defenders. Got an eight-yard pickup, Mark and Nelly. Wisconsin's... You know, Y'all might ought to think about going to like a hurry up offense. It's getting to be about that time. We're coming up on six minutes left in the game. Six minutes, 20 seconds left in the half. Excuse me. I mean, just to keep Indiana's defense from allowing to set itself right. for what they want to try to throw at the Badger offense. Second and two. Call it. Here comes a blitz fumble on the snap. Indiana has it. Oh my, oh my. I think Brooks was a little hasty in trying to get away from center. Regardless, that's something that shouldn't happen. I mean, Brooks and Al Johnson have taken snaps for two years now. First and 10 Indiana, the 44 yard line. Ball gets up, that's on Brooks. And then now it's been kicked around. I believe Christopher made the recovery. Colin Christopher. And this is two weeks in a row we've seen Brooks come out and not have a very good game. Obviously, this last week he got beat up a little bit and had to go in the, at halftime a little early. But this, you know, this week it's like he's hung, the whole team's hung over from last week. And that is caught inside the 10. Jerry Johnson, the fullback, going downfield over the middle, 30 yards down the field and makes the reception. He's 255 pounds. He's 30 yards downfield. He's being covered by a former defensive back, in Bryson Thompson. That doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen. Look at this. And he's beat by a lot. Boy, you know, look for a while that Wisconsin's going to try to make a comeback. Randall L. snared down at the 10-yard line. Like Wisconsin was going to be able to mount some semblance of a comeback, but then Indiana marches down the field. You have a fumbled snap and, and now Indiana's knocking at the door they're going over the 40 point mark here before the first half is expired it was 59 to nothing last time Indiana came here Wisconsin will be lucky if Indiana doesn't score 59 points approaching the five minute mark of the first half second and ten shoestring tackle by Bryson against Johnson. And I want to tell you, that's a total mismatch. 
Bryson is as good as he is sure hand attack or what have you. Like we said Johnson 255 Bryson 234 and I don't know that he's 234 now. And they stopped the clock. Well they're going to march him back a couple of yards here. Is there a flag there? Yeah. The illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. Well, Indiana is really trying to stick it to Wisconsin right now. They're coming out and getting off the ball quick, going on first sound, and in doing that, they didn't get set. And that's where you come up with their illegal motion penalty. Second and 15 as we're under five minutes now in the second quarter. Sorts of time. Oh, he is amazing. Randall that could have been a seven or eight yard loss. And he got down to the 11 yard line. Well, and nobody's getting free for the Badgers. He had all day before he had to scramble. Good job of the secondary now. I mean, let's right. accentuate the positives here. One guy on the ground. Wendell's going to get free. Ben Herbert's going to get free. The offensive line's there to pick it up. Indiana can get a first down without having to get a touchdown. Randall Elf fakes the option. And he is ridden down at about the six yard line. Brought down by Joey Bose. Joey Bose and a trailing Michael Broussard make the stop. Fourth down. Well, Randall Ells being he's being able to sit back there and do I, whatever he wants. Indiana saying we're going to go for this because they don't have a, a place kicking unit per se. Well, and then if this doesn't work out, Wisconsin's deep in their own territory and not playing good football on offense. And you got this guy who is a magician running your offense. You know, we've seen his athletic ability. This is a guy who's played baseball and basketball as well as football in his college college career at Indiana. On the year, Indiana, one of four in fourth down. They're coming in to kick it. Wow. Well, I don't understand that. Delay a game. They took a delay a game to move the ball back five yards. Well, it was improve the angle. <laughs> well, it does. <laughs> they need some help, so that improve. <laughs> they got to improve something. Robertson into attempt the field goal. Here's Robertson, who is 0 of 1 in field goal tries. This is uh, a lot more than just a point after. Spotted at the 18 yard line, 28 yard attempt. This to make it 42 to 10. Kick is up. Lots of foot on that one. And the kick is good. It's and so Indiana. the Bollinger 42. fumble results in another here. three tacked onto the board in Indiana. Extends the advantage to 42 to 10. You notice a lot of Badger fans sitting on their hands with good reason. Their home team is down by 32 big ones. Yeah, it's not because it's 40 degrees outside either. I mean, there's some slow bleeding going on on this field right now for the Badgers. Well, it has been a. They needed a tourniquet to stop it for a <laughs> while there in the first quarter. I mean, it, yeah, I've, Van, I've never seen anything like that first quarter. And neither is Barry Alvarez, at least here at Wisconsin. Get connected to all your Badger Sports broadcast information at www.wpt.org slash sports. It's all just a mouse click away when you log on to the Wisconsin Public Television website. Here you see some of the fall colors here in the capital city, and uh, that's been probably one of the prettier pictures we've shown so far. <laughs> You know it's not good with three minutes and ten seconds left in the first half and people are heading for the exits. Roger, Those are all smokers. That's yeah, smoke break. Nick Davis, Michael <laughs> they can leave the stadium to the designated smoking area and then they come back. And they're going to pooch it again. Anelli from the 26 yard line and uh, he gets oh, thrown around. 
Well, this is going to happen. I mean, it, this game has been so lopsided. Guys are going to start. Yeah, exactly. Tem tempers are flaring out there. And it, most of it's going to be the Badgers because Indiana's going to start talking a lot of smack right now. Well, you know, let's not forget that they are 0 and 3. They yeah. might should remember that they are 0 and 3. I don't know. <laughs> they could be talking a whole lot of smack. Uh, well, today they look like the best team in the country for a quarter. Wisconsin is trying to get to two and on the Big Ten uh, under Coach Alvarez. They did that 93, 94, 97, and 98. There you see Lee Evans. You saw him protect the ball yeah. just as he was getting into the mix of uh, Indiana tacklers. And now they go with the hurry up. Oh, they got it. Clock stops while they move the chains. Second time we've seen the shovel to Lee Evans today. This time he gets some blocking downfield. Anelli into Indiana territory. They move the sticks. Wrapped up by number seven, Hanley at the 43 yard line. Good job of holding on to the ball yeah, right there. Was. He had his head, wasn't facing the def defender. He swings his head around and gets tattooed. Bollinger, eight of 13, 113 yards. Bollinger goes over the middle. He's got Evans. Caught. Down to the one yard line. He lost his shoe. One shoe at all. 42 yard pass. Evans within a shoe of getting six more. Well, and a good job again by Lee Evans to concentrate on this ball because he is so wide open for a second. Brooks throws good this throw. ball a little high. But it's gives, right there. Exactly. Gives the defense time to catch up to Lee. Catches that between his, between his knees. Hey, whatever it takes, hey, you know. Just make the play. <laughs> they need a lot of that and then some. The Badgers, first and goal from the one. Broderick Williams, and I'm not sure he got back to the one. Williams, he did not look comfortable on that carry. He was stuttering. His stutter steps all the way up to the hole. There was a big hole if he cuts this out to the left a little bit, out to the, out to the left side of the offensive line. No and both of the Coons brothers were in, Russ people. and Chad Coons, on this play. Just follow your blockers. Don't stutter step. He ends up running into his own own guard. You saw a hole there, huh? There was a hole. He's just got to bounce it out to okay. the outside. Get All your right. head up. Quarterback sneak. No signal. Brooks Brooks Bonner Bonner with the keeper. Precious time continues to tick off the clock. Came up short. Looks like they have about a foot to go. I'd run the same play again. Yeah. Touchdown. There you go. All right. <laughs> you know what? This could be one of the more bizarre finishes. I'm going to go out on a limb and hopefully it's going to be a substantial limb to support me. But <laughs> you got 105 to go in the second quarter. And now you're down 42 16. You know, they say it ain't over till the fat lady sings and uh, she's on stage. She's near the microphone, but she hasn't started clearing her voice yet. Well, and usually if the Badgers score 16, 17 points and a half, you think they're going to be ahead. Kick is up and it's good. Now here's the important and thing: you got to keep Indiana off the board. Forty-two, seventeen, sixty-five seconds remaining in the second quarter, and Wisconsin uh, trying to get into the locker room. And I wouldn't say that they're in one piece. But they're trying to, to glue Humpty Dumpty back together again because they have been fragmented here. I hope they have some good glue because at halftime there's going to be a lot of yelling going on. Well, and that yelling is going to be coaching. I mean, it's not. Yeah, the coaches are disappointed. The coaches are shell shocked as the players because they can't believe it either. But I'll tell you what, the Badgers have been able to battle back on a couple of drives now, put some points on the board. 17 to 42. It's not over. There's another half of football. If they can if they can hold them here in this last minute and five seconds, 
It'll be a much better Badger team in the second half than we saw in the first. Number 23, Carter. Producer Deb Piper just kind of whispered, by, whispered in my ear but points off turnover. I want to try to recount him as the ball is blown off the tee. But Evans was stripped of the ball. That led to an Indiana touchdown. Uh, Munden had a block, point, uh, block punt that was a touchdown. Pettis fumble set up an Indiana touchdown. Uh, let's see. And then Bollinger, when he fumbled, that set up the field goal. It's 24 points. You take that away. They're down by 25 right now. Yeah. And it is a touchback. So let me, if my old Miss Math would be an 18 17 ball game, Indiana would be ahead. Oh, you can take that going in the locker room. That's right. That's right. Points off turnovers. Turner, turnovers always, always are a good sign of how the game's going. You know, I liked what I saw there on the sideline between Jeff Horton, the quarterback coach, and Brooks Bollinger. You don't see any panic down right. there. You know, they're very, they're very cool, calm, and collected. Granted, they're down 42 well, 17, but you know what? Like you said, the second half is in front of them. They got to make sure that number 11 uh, doesn't continue to wreak havoc on the Badger defense. That's where the ball game is going to be won or lost. Well, you know, this Johnson reminds me of, of uh, Duckett from Michigan State. Just a Big Just looking, big bruiser. Bruiser. Oh, yeah. Moves well, gets yeah, downfield. Sure I mean, we saw him make a big catch, a 30 yard catch downfield. You know, the thing, when I said the coaches for Wisconsin are going to be yelling, oh, they're yelling is coaching loud. I mean, that's that's how they are. You know, maybe they were shell shocked at the beginning, but I think they've been able to gather their troops back around them and, and come out and play a little better football in the second quarter. Randall L, 29 and counting. Are they going to be content to sit on it? And that's going to probably be the final. Oh, Wisconsin is going to call a timeout. It's going to be third down, and we'll call it five. He has one of the play. They stop him here. They could force a punt. Now you got it. Got a, one of the most potentially dangerous punt returners in a Nick Davis. You give him a chance to uh, touch the ball. And they're going to be punting it into the wind uh -huh. if they have to. Maybe get a shot for a field goal or whatever. I'm sure he's probably trying to not so much compose himself, but compose his words yeah. at halftime, measuring his words. I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, you've got to be positive. I mean, you're going to certainly accentuate the negatives and hope that they don't happen again in the second half. But you, you also got to build your ball club up and say, hey, guys, you know what? We dug ourselves this hole. Now we got to dig our way out of it, okay? That's what we got to try to do in the second half. It's quite honestly that simple and it is a very simple game what you do determines on how complicated the game can be yeah we haven't seen the badgers it's it's not that they haven't been prepared and they, they didn't uh, study their playbooks and things like that it was physical mistakes yeah. dropping the ball turnovers anytime you put the ball on the carpet uh, you certainly make it a lot easier for the opposition they're going to short snap it randall l now he's behind center. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Randall L. And he stays in bounds. No, nope, they say he got out of bounds. What, how good of a misdirection play was that? You know, you could almost see it developing before they snapped the ball because they were running motion. And then they brought him back to the wide side of the field. I mean, it's a great call right here. Fake it. Get him out there. Nobody stayed home. Delante McGrew, Mike Eccles. Steps out right there. Yeah. That's why they stopped the clock. Nobody's more disappointed about stepping out than Randall L. He wanted to get in. Get in the locker room. Well, they got seven. Oh, it looks like they're going to just take a knee here. And Indiana calls a timeout. Timeout. Indiana, come on now. I bet you Randall L. said, Coach, I don't want to take a knee. I want to take a chance of getting six more. Hey, it worked once. Why not try it again? Well, you throw your fullback <laughs> for about a 30-yard play. He gets downfield. Nobody wants to hit that Wayne, guy. He's 255 pounds. Lean, mean, Bucky fighting Kansas machine out of Louisville, Kentucky. The guy's Jeremy, as big as a thoroughbred. Jeremy Johnson, the fullback, that's, he's had two big plays downfield, two huge plays downfield. And one time, Badger's smallest guy on the field for, for their defense, Scott Starks, has to stop him with a big hit. 
And if Jeremy Johnson isn't so big and not out of gas at the point after running 40 yards, Scott Starks may not make that tackle. Because he ran through a couple just to get there. It's a Chamber of Commerce shot right there. If you want to look at some of the reasons why you want to come to school at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, that was a pretty good glimpse of it. Stadium, and of course, this facility will change over the next four years. Not a significant facelift, but they're going to close in the horseshoe, add some additional sky boxes and what have you on this side. And so uh, the old camp will undergo, and I think they're going to expand the uh, capacity to about 84, 85,000. Not a bad looking spectacle. They took a timeout to come back in the same formation and down the ball. And <laughs> that is going to do it. The first half comes to an end. Wisconsin will try to go back into the locker room and somehow wave their magical wand and see if they can pull this one out of the rabbit's hat. They're going to need some magic because Indiana will not go down easily. The Hoosiers, after two quarters, are out front 42-17. Vanced out, Jamie Vandervelt moments away from the start of the second half, and uh, it was not a very memorable first half if you're a football fan of the Badgers because Wisconsin, quite honestly, really laid the table, set the table for Indiana, and it was all Wisconsin's miscues that, quite honestly, led to the big advantage for the Hoosiers. Yeah, there's a 25-point difference that the Badgers have to make up here in the second half to have a shot at winning the game. 24 of those 25 points came off turnovers. Levron Williams came in and he lowered the boom very early on in the first half alone. Williams, 11 carries, 113 yards. The first one got the Hoosiers on the board, a six-yard run on the option, and nobody does it better than Antoine Randall L. And then the next one, 56-yard touchdown jaunt for Williams. As we said, 11 carries, 113 yards, 10.3 yards per coverage. Carry and uh, did a nice job there to run away from the would-be defenders. Great blocks up front. He wasn't even touched. And then Brooks Bollinger, who hit on 10 of 15 passes for 166 yards. The lone TD right here, a little razzle-dazzle. The throwback, and then Evans had to wait for this one to come down. But when he did, it came down in his hands, and he scored the touchdown. And then Williams, this could be a hockey game. Williams gets a hat trick in the first half. Again, on the option. Randall L. pitch back, and Williams escorts the bacon into the end zone, and Indiana, as the score would certainly indicate, uh, dominated, and there you see Williams. Maybe he'll be he was shaken up in the locker room at halftime. He won't play in the second half because <laughs> he's been a one-man wrecking crew. So has Randall L. for that matter. He's played extremely well. well Look at the turnovers. That's, that's yeah. the biggest glaring the area right there. I mean, look at the time time of possession it's almost a six minute difference there but the turnovers are the key and the Badgers gave the ball over three times gave the and both or all three of those times it was deep in their own territory which allowed Indiana to score okay remember what I said about the onside kick you saw the difference in rushing yards 66 for the Badgers 171 for Indiana it, I mean, just seeing that stat, it looks like the Badgers are running uphill. The Badgers will have the wind at their back at the third quarter, and that could be an important factor as they try to piecemeal a comeback. Noiser, and it's Carter from about his own three-yard line. And Carter, Carter ridden down by Brooks. Right up by Nick Weiser. You see Nick Rice in 45 down there. A couple weeks ago, he asked to be put back on the kickoff coverage team. And that's exactly why he wanted to be out there making plays, helping his teammates out. Let's see how the defense comes out after halftime. I guarantee you, Barry Alvarez and his staff, you just saw Kevin Cosgrove, the defense coordinator, make, I guarantee you they made adjustments at halftime, trying to keep their guys in it. 
Randall L. That looked like a busted play. That looked like the fullback Johnson was going to get it. And for whatever reason, Randall L. pulled it back. Said, "Big fella, I'm going to run behind you rather than give you the the ball." <laughs> He's a big guy, 255 pounds. I'd follow him too. Three-yard pickup. Now this becomes a, a game of possession time. In Wisconsin, quite honestly, they had no takeaways in the first half. They need some in the second half if they, as they attempt to come back. Randall L goes upfield. Caught. Starks on the cover. Randall loose coverage. Yeah, the key there is the loose Number coverage. He gave him a five, Parker. six, seven yard cushion. Got Starks on the coverage. It's a lot of them to Take Ball's a couple of hard steps upfield, get by the Indiana. first down marker, and come back for the ball. Glenn Johnson, the receiver, set out last year as a red shirt. Played in eight games as a true freshman, averaging about 12 yards per reception. They moved the sticks there. Randall L. trying to get to the outside, has room. And he's Randall hit, ridden to the turf by Starks, but by not Starks. before he gets another first down. They move the chains on consecutive downs. A.C. Myler, the left tackle, number 62 on this play, first just crunches down. Delonte McGrew and opens up a big opening off the, off the end of the line. We'll get another look at this play. It's going to be coming from the bottom of your screen. Uh, he basically just pushes him over another guy. But that's all the edge he needs right there. Randall L. gets to the corner and gets another first. The ball spotted at the Indiana 45-yard line. Williams into the secondary. Williams still on his feet inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Levron Williams, this young man is going to be pushing the 200-yard barrier. Wisconsin is just completely getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. And that, could, that play right there could have been stopped for a 6- or 7-yard gain. But Mike Eccles misses the tackle right in the middle of the field. You're going to see Eccles come into the picture right Look at the there. Hole. You're not going to tackle this kid with a shoulder. you got to wrap him up. He pushes down his own man to pick up some more yards. Scott Starks, and it's not good to be calling his name a lot to, when he's making tackles 30, 40 yards down the field. Randall L. perhaps changing off the line. Williams to the outside. Wendell Bryant makes the stop. Good nice job by Wendell Bryant. I mean, that's a long Wendell way for a defensive tackle. lineman to be running to run down the ball carrier, but he makes the stop. Good pursuit. Again, last week we saw the Badgers able to scrape over the top and get two guys for two guys on this option. Man it up. Well, Jeff Mack has to take Randall L. Wendell Bryant's right there to finish it off. But that's that, after a four-yard game. Yeah. And that was very good coverage, quite honestly. Right. There you see some of Wendell's stats. Ten tackles for loss, seven sacks. Indiana can get a first down without having to get a touchdown. Oh, Williams, he just floats into the end zone for his fourth touchdown. And there's some post-play theatrics going on between Joey Bose and Courtney Roby. Check that, that's the fifth touchdown. Matching his number. <laughs> and he just, that was a convoy there. Again, untouched. He got some great blocks up front. And again, Jeremy Johnson, number one, the fullback, just punished Bryson Thompson all the way into the end zone. Robertson in to try the point after. And it's good. And Indiana leads good. Wisconsin Indiana. here at Camp Randall Stadium with 12 27 to go 17. in the third quarter. 49 17. Well, University of Wisconsin welcomes today's game day presenter, the Gordon Flash. Well, and that's a scene we've seen all too often today is that Indiana flag running across the Badger end zone. Here's another look at the touchdown. Watch number one, the fullback. Gets on Bryson and drives with five yards into the end zone. And it, Van, I believe you could have scored that touchdown. <laughs> you give me a lot more credit than I deserve. Here's another look at it. Missed tackle. Scott Starks diving at his feet.
Also in the Big Ten slate on this sixth Saturday of October, Illinois bounces back from the Michigan defeat to beat Minnesota 25-14. Purdue at home hands the Iowa Hawkeyes their first loss of the year. Michigan State, or I'm sorry, Michigan and Penn State, and then Northwestern and Ohio State under the lights. Well, and as we see all those scores, if you throw our score into it, 17 to 49 in favor of the Hoosiers, that's one of those scores that pops up on the scoreboard at other stadiums and the whole crowd goes, ooh, you know, this is not something anybody was expecting. By the way, that fifth touchdown run as we get the kickoff. Oh, Indiana. And there. He was out of bounds, and there was a hit after the catch. Well, I think they're going to get him for breaking that two-yard cushion. Look at Cameron. He says, are you kidding me? But let me finish that thought. Uh, that ties this Camp Randall Stadium record. Billy Merrick had five touchdowns in 1974, and then Ron Johnson of Michigan had five touchdowns in 1968. And there you see Cam Cameron. <laughs> he says, all right, I want to hear this call. I want to hear this call. Well, you got to give the guy, even though you didn't kick the ball deep, you got to give him that two-yard cushion to catch the ball. I think that's what they're talking about right now. And if he was out of bounds, then it's a 15-yard penalty for a personal foul. Well, it's going to go against Indiana, and that's not going to make Cam Cameron too happy. All he's got to do is Violation of the two-yard radius on the kickers. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, he hasn't had much to complain about today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bollinger, the first half, 10 of 15, as we said, 166 yards. Also ran for 26 yards. He is now the most prolific rushing quarterback in Badger history, having surpassed Dale Hackbart. And there you see Jerome Pettis just dragged to the turf by Justin Smith. You know, they're down by 32 points here. I, you know, I don't know that you can establish the run at this point. Well, they had that right there. Justin Smith, he's a big linebacker. He's untouched, scraping over the top. Pettis doesn't have the same kind of speed that Anthony Davis has, and he's just not able to get to the corner. You know, you have Anthony Davis in there who is, I, it's, it's safe to say, he's your number one back on the team, and uh, not, having him in, not having him in there changes things quite a bit. There's the blitz. Davis comes back for it. And he gets right to the 50-yard line. Pickup of about 12, 13 yards. Good patience by Bomber because he was about a hair's breadth away from tucking it and running with it. Yeah, which is something we've seen him do a lot. He's got good protection here. A little late pressure, 